Okay, I got my laptop out uh, because we're going to do a little live coding. We're going to implement an algorithm. Actually, we're going to implement a data structure that supports orthogonal range search queries. So let's draw some pictures here. So this uh, starts with, let's say, some points in the plane. Well, you can see these little dots, I'll make them big. So I have these points in the plane, and I'm going to build a data structure that starts from this set of points, and it can support queries, and the queries are orthogonal range search queries, and orthogonal range, it's just a rectangle. So uh, I give it a rectangle, and the output should be all the points inside this rectangle. So if I would input this rectangle as my query, I would get these three points back. Um, and, and then I should be able to support an arbitrary rectangle. Now, how do I represent a rectangle in order to feed it into the query? Uh, it depends on how you want to think about a rectangle, but here's a nice way to think of a rectangle, is that you think about it as a, a product of intervals. So let's say this is x0, x1. I have this interval of the, of the real line, and the rectangle falls in that interval. And I have an interval y0 to y1. And all the points that have an x-coordinate in the interval of x0 to x1, and a y-coordinate in the interval of y0 to y1 are in the rectangle. So that's a way to express the rectangle as a set, in particular as a Cartesian product of intervals. So if I write this as the closed interval from x0 to x1, and I take the product y0, y1, this gives me the rectangle. And this is pretty general. If I had another dimension, for example, you know, I could add more of these, v0, v1, etc. Okay, so that's, uh, that's how we'll write down a rectangle or we'll think about it as this product of intervals and that also tells us a little bit about how we should perhaps represent it in code because we're going to write some Python and if we're going to write this in Python we might as well use NumPy and we'll just use a, a NumPy array. Just If d is my dimension it's going to be a d by 2 uh, NumPy array. All right. And we can use that to figure out how to do uh, membership testing, for example, how to tell if one of these points is actually in the box um, is pretty straightforward now. Um, so if I'm going to write one out. Let's say here's my box and I'm going to pass it. What am I going to give it? I'm going to give it a, maybe a list of lists. NumPy can take a list of lists, no problem. So there's my x0, x1. I would put actual numbers in here for an actual box. I'll just break it up into lines so it's kind of clear, maybe, this uh, matrix structure. So if you think of a uh, two-dimensional array, you can think of it as a, also as a grid or a, as a matrix. And if I want to index into this, uh, certain things are easier to index than others. For instance, if I just want you know, this right here, I just want y0, y1. I want the interval of the y-axis. That would just be box one, right? I've got box zero, box one, box two. Um, so just by indexing, that's what I get. And actually, there's nothing NumPy special about this. If this was just a list of lists, it would be exactly the same. Uh, one thing we do get from NumPy that's a little bit handy is that we also get these. Um, if you want to slice vertically, you actually have to use, well, slicing. So um, this is not how the data is stored. The data is stored as a array of arrays. So if I want to go the other way, I could try to take a transpose or something, or I could just index it as follows. I would call this box, uh, and then I slice out this dot dot here, this colon, is telling me the range of indices corresponding to the rows I want to keep. And since I didn't put anything on either side, that means I get all of them, right? If you leave, leave out something on the beginning um, or on the end, it just goes to all the way to the beginning or all the way to the end. In this case, both. And then I want column zero, right? So if I wanted to index a particular entry, for instance, this one, this, this would be box. I could do this as box two, uh, one, but I could also do it as box two, comma one, which is a little bit nicer if you're thinking about this as um, coordinates. Um, coordinates into the grid, and that's really what we're doing here, except we're slicing out. We're getting the whole column, 
all of column zero. That's going to be important in a second because if I want to check if a point is in this box, um, I could loop over all the rows and all the coordinates and check them all. But if you have a if you have your data in this kind of array NumPy array vectorial form, you probably want to keep things vectorial and actually do just vector operations all at once. So, for instance, if I took box colon zero here, this is the first column. I want to check that that is less than or equal to um, all the coordinates of my point. Um, and I would like all the coordinates of that point to be less than or equal to all the upper bounds on all the intervals, which is box one. Okay, so this would be how I check to see if P is in the box. Now, uh, it's not right exactly yet because as code, this doesn't work. Not just because you don't have this symbol on your keyboard, but also because uh, the way NumPy does these comparison operations. So remember, NumPy, whenever possible, tries to do everything element-wise. So this, this uh, comparison right here isn't going to give you a true or false, even though we might use this in linear algebra to mean, well, that every coordinate is less than or equal to the corresponding coordinate on the other side. Um, in this case, we'll actually just get an array of Booleans. And what we'd like to turn that into is we'd like to say, well, all of them should be less than or equal to. And so we can write that out explicitly. So we'll write all of box 0 less than or equal to p and all of box, uh, oops, I put it on the wrong way. Oh, we can save this. We can save this. Let's see, box 1 should be greater than or equal to p. There we go. So this would be one way to test if the point is in the box. Okay, so um, uh, once we have this, we're going to be able to very quickly write down um, a very um, concise data structure that will support orthogonal ranges. And so let's do it. All right. Got some co a code window here. And all right. So uh, first, I want that method, or I want that function. Um, so given a point and a box, we're just going to return true if it's in the box or not. And um, as we saw, that was something like uh, less than or equal to p and all of um, p less than or equal to. Whenever I try to write less than or equal to, my fingers automatically hit backslash le. So it's hard for me to write the <laughs> less than symbol and then the equals, uh, the perils of writing a lot of LaTeX. All right, and it just barely doesn't fit on the screen, but you can trust me that I closed that last parenthesis. All right, so that's uh, my uh, inbox method, and we'll find out if it works um, eventually. Let's make our data structure, though. I don't have a good name for this. I've been calling it linear proximity. It's a terrible name for a class, but um, I was thinking that we might support other kinds of proximity search data, struct, uh, uh, data structure problems like nearest neighbor search or k-nearest neighbor search or any of those. And so I thought, oh, it should be proximity, but it's going to be called linear proximity because everything it does, it just, it's going to loop over all the points and just um, check them all. And um, there are more efficient ways of doing this, but uh, there are a few ways that are simpler. And in fact, for many problems, this will be the simplest thing to do. So I'm just going to store the points. If I create one of these data structures, I give it a set of points, and I'm just going to store them. Um, I'm going to copy them just because, uh, um, well, just in case I ever want to use this in a form where I don't want the data structure to mess with or be, be messed up by changes in the original set. All right. so. Um, that's how I'm going to initialize it. I'm just going to save the points. And I'm going to have this uh, range search. Oops, what is that? Um, I was going to just call it range, but you really shouldn't call a function range in Python, I think, because um, 
range is an important object already in Python. So uh, I get a box as input, and I should return all the points in the box. So let's try this. For p in p if in the box p box right if it's in there um, I'm gonna that's gonna be one of the points I return so I could package these all up um, but maybe I'll just make it a generator and just yield all the points so so it'll keep spitting out all the points that are in the range one at a time so most of the time it, it, I, if I just want to iterate over the points in the range I'll get them and if I would like a list or a set or some other kind of iterable collection of, um, of the points in the range, well, um, I can just do that um, from the calling side rather than on this side. All right, so that's, uh, that's it. That's my data structure. Does it work? Hmm. We should give it a try. Um, now, to, to actually test this, Probably the right thing to do would be to come up with some very specific boxes and, and try to put a point in the box. Um, but visually, maybe it's more fun if I just um, show you some pictures. All right, so I take this implementation, and, uh, and what I did here is, okay, I created an, uh, a bunch of points. I didn't show you the points, but I should show you the points just once uh, so you believe me. These are real points. So I have uh, a set of points here. I, uh, I imported, this is some code I wrote just to be able to draw some pictures. And here's just a bunch of points. All right, so then we're gonna draw these. And, um, and the way it works is I created this box, right? So that's the same code we saw for the box. It's a two-dimensional box because they're two-dimensional points. And uh, what, I, what I do in here is in the drawing part is I just, uh, I just draw the points. Okay, let's do that. Let's actually just do that first, just so that we get a feel for what's going on. So I drew the points. I'll cut, comment these out. I'll run this code, and there it is. That's the set of points. And uh, I have a box that I care about, so I'll draw that one too. And so that's the box. And now uh, I'm going to call the range search. I'll uncomment these lines. So in the range search, it's going to—it's an iter—it's a generator, so I can iterate over all the points that it finds. And for each one, I'll draw it. Um, this dot function makes a point that's a little uh, darker. So when I run it, uh, hey, it works. Okay, it's not surprising. I can change the parameters here, get some different boxes, um, and get different sets of points. And this at least gives us, I think, a pretty strong sense that it works. Um, go way out here, way off the edge of the screen or I can go narrow, um, et cetera. Okay, so there it is. Um, as, as far as data structures go, I'll bring the code back so you can see it. Um, it is not a complicated thing. Um, there was our code. It, but uh, in, for many cases, probably this would be good enough. Uh, if you have a small number of points, um, you don't need to be too clever. On the other hand, as the number of points gets large, uh, it's, it seems like maybe we should be able to do better. And part of the reason we should think that is just intuition from uh, one-dimensional problems. Like when you do binary search, if you were to try to do range search over a line, points on a line, a uh, binary search tree would do that in something like log n plus k time, where k is the number of points in the range. And so uh, we know we could do better um, you know, it feels like we should be able to do better, and so that's what I'll do in the next video when we implement the same operations only with uh, KD tree.